has anything changed? In fact, that goes back to a tweet that someone had in the previous piece that nothing has changed since Ferguson. Gwen, have any, has anything changed? Open it up to all three of you. I'll start with you, Gwen. I think we have like a new civil rights movement. Uh, I think that uh, people have definitely been reinvigorated uh, as far as organizing, as far as protesting, as far as demonstrating. And I, and I think it was needed. So if nothing else has changed, that has changed. Um, we still have some of the same problems. I'm going to go back to the, the, the Kerner report, but one of the things that they said was when they talked about the ca causes of the uprisings of the 60s, it was, and you mentioned that, it was black frustration with the lack of economic opportunities. We're still talking about that. Uh, residential segregation was another problem. We're still talking about that. We're talking about a lot of the same issues that they were talking about in 1968 and really during the 50s and the 40s and the 30s because these issues keep coming up over and over and over again. And I think people are refocused on those issues. I always think about when President Obama was elected and people were saying, we're in a post-racial society. Racism is dead. Who was saying that most, do you think? White folks, black folks? I think it was white folks hoping, <laughs> not wanting to address that problem. Um, another thing that, that uh, the, the Kerner Report said, and we don't like to talk about these issues so much anymore, is like, they said white racism is one of the problems. And I still think that's a problem. We've got to face these issues. And I think we're at least beginning to grapple more with these issues than we were maybe 10 years ago, even five years ago, before Michael Brown uh, was, was so tragically killed. I, I, and I, so I think things are, are definitely changed. There's definitely more scrutiny when any African-American or any person of color or anybody, period, is uh, the victim of some sort of police uh, violence. We're looking at it. We're so, on it. So we're why, watching it. Why, we're, we're, we're scrutinizing why it. Why is this so hard to talk? Is it, I mean, does this, Chief, is this hard conversation for you to have? No, it's not hard conversation for, for many of us uh, in law enforcement. Um, have things changed in the law enforcement world since August 9th? Absolutely. No doubt about it. We've seen Senate Bill 5 passed. That's going to have a huge effect in the municipal courts in St. Louis County. We saw the governor today uh, speak about additional training for police officers. The thing I think that, that we're missing, the piece that we're missing that needs to change still, is there's one common theme in all of these situations where a suspect is killed by the police. And it's that the individual is resisting arrest or they're not following the officer's command. I'm not saying that's what, a good reason that they should be killed. I don't mean that at all. What I'm saying is, if there's no resisting, generally speaking, there's not going to be any harm. And we have to address that piece as well or we're just fixing one part of this and we're not fixing the other part of it. And I think that's going to be the challenge. Do we go back into our schools uh, or do we have someone like James Clark from Better Family Life go into our schools and talk to young men and women about what to do when they encounter the police and what to expect from the police and what the police expect from you. And if you don't like what the police did, this is your recourse. This is how you follow through with that. I think we have to get that piece involved here. How does that sit with you and the people that you hang out with and the people you represent on the Ferguson Commission? Um, I hate to kind of disagree with you again, Chief, but it, that, that little piece, I would change and take that out and say the thing we need is better relationship building between the community and the police. And then it's not going to start on the community side. It has to start with the police. If the police knew the ones that they were actually protecting and serving when they're resisting arrest the first thing in their mind wouldn't be to pull out a handgun. And, and it's in what I guess upset people in the African American community is when, you know, when an African American <clears throat> resists arrest, it is they are most likely found dead. But when you have a Caucasian person resisting arrest and they even have maybe a handgun, they happen to be apprehended, they happen to be taken into jail. It's not the same way for each side. So I think that's why people are so upset. In my opinion, I, I feel like things have changed. It, we have a lot more changing to do, but like my sister said to the left of me, the most beautiful thing that has happened is to see the young people that have like never probably stepped up for themselves or never um, organized before and came together and against one common force and finally said no more. No longer will my voice be silent. No more will I allow people to say that my life does not matter because my life does matter and I'm going to show it. So it, it has been small steps, but I think the African American community needs to see drastic change to really feel like change has happened. Drastic change from the, our systems of government 
from our, what do you mean when you say drastic change? I mean, from the systems of government, from within our communities, elected officials, I mean, one thing, dramatic changes, and one thing that the commission is also recommending is like, can getting rid of so many of these municipalities and getting rid of so many of these police departments. We're, we're not saying that we don't need police officers. We're not saying that, you know, officers don't have a tough day. But what we're saying is it is too many of these municipalities, it is too many of these departments, and they're not really focused on the community. But like you said, elected officials are pushing them to raise revenue because their municipality and department is so small. So it, it's this horrible relationship between police and community, and it's never going to get better. You, you can't pull someone over one day for no reason, then the next day try to be friends with them because I got to go to court and I probably may not even have money for all these extra little tickets that you added on to. So. Back, back to Rasheen's point, do the police have a greater responsibility to change in this relationship? They are the ones with, with the power, with the, with the authority. Well, certainly the police are seen really as the symbol of government. So yes, we do have a great responsibility and do need some changes. And I have to, I have to agree with you 100% when it comes to the talk of the need to write tickets and, and revenue and the, the bad feeling. And one, one minute you're handing out a baseball card to somebody in the community, the next minute you're giving them a ticket for having their a screw missing out of their license plate. And I can tell you that those things really happen in some communities because they're interested in revenue. So uh, I, I think that the, the change, the need is there on both sides. Uh, but it does heavily fall on onto the government officials as it should. We talk about if we don't know our history, we repeat it. What what you know? The chief mentioned something that's not being talked about. What do you see that maybe gets lost if we get too down the road in the weeds on one particular yeah. issue? We miss. A, is there a bigger point? I, I think there is a, a bigger issue. Um, when Dylan Roof um, slaughtered those nine people in in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, people were saying, oh, this, this lone, crazy nut, he's not, this is not the way America does things. And I remember Gerald Horn, who's a, a respected historian, he said, you have to look at the soil that nourished Dylan Roof, that the larger society is responsible. And I think we have to look at the larger society. What is the, the soil that nourishes a policeman that shoots a Michael Brown? What is the soil that nourishes a policeman that shoots a Walter Scott? Uh, what is uh, the soil that nourishes uh, a policeman that treats Sandra Bland the way she was treated? Um, so we have to look at the larger society. I'm, I'm, you know, the po police are just a symptom uh, of, of a larger problem with, with, our, with racism in this country, and I think we have to deal with racism. And I think until we honestly address that problem, these things are gonna keep repeating themselves. I see it historically. I look at things historically. And these things keep happening over and over again. I'm sure the Ferguson Commission is going to come up with some great recommendations. But are we going to do anything with those recommendations? Are we going to follow those recommendations? If the larger society doesn't change, those recommendations might fall on deaf ears. We don't want that to happen again. How, do any of you have an idea of how we change on some of these issues on a personal level? Because like when something like the Charleston shootings happen, a lot of people said he's a lone wolf. And a lot of people said that that's a very blind, you have a blind spot for seeing it that way, that it's not treated the same as if uh, someone, if this, is a, this is terrorism. It's not, if it had been someone of a particular faith, it might have been considered, looked at differently. There's, it, it goes beyond just what we're talking about from Ferguson. How do, how do we have a more productive conversation around race? It's a tough issue because race is so embedded and has been embedded in our our country for so long. Um, one thing I can say is continuing to just, continuing to fight in uh, the ones that have been oppressed. I noticed um, when we first started this Ferguson movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, when we was going out protesting, it wasn't a lot of people on our side. And it's still the majority still seem not to understand why, you know, young people are going to the streets and saying Black Lives Matter. But over time, we've been able to have conversations and dialogues with other individuals who may not understand why we're in the streets for the last 100 days or yelling, you know, FTP, or why we're so angry. Over time, you're going to pull some people to your side. You're not going to be able to get them all. But if you're able to just pull one person and two person, and hopefully they'll pull one and two, because they can go back to their colleagues and won't be able to say the same things that I said, and their friends will be able to get it. Are so. sides what we need? Is that what we're talking about? I know. I was thinking the exact same thing. I said, this isn't about pulling people away from each other and 
and being far away, we need to figure out how to come together as opposed to saying you're on this side or you're on that side. I prefer to say when I saw the violence and the rioting in Ferguson, I said to myself, I can see why this is happening, knowing the history of what we have in this area of St. Louis County. I would never condone the burning and the looting, never, ever, ever, but I can see how the anger was there and how the anger was, was pent up. So I think we have to both understand each other's point of view and understand, uh, and I think that'll be the solution to coming together is, is both, if we're gonna call it sides, if both sides say, listen, I understand your point of view as long as you understand my point of view, and intelligent people can disagree. Uh, but I think that's the way that we have to have those conversations is agree that we were all raised differently. We were all grew up in different neighborhoods. We all have different perspectives on life. And how can we find common ground to get past this instead of picking sides and saying, you're with me or you're against me? We have about 30, 45 seconds left. Some people are worried about this coming weekend, this, this anniversary. Should they? Shouldn't be worried at all. Uh, the, the young people in the um, folks that are coming in and folks that are already here that want to be part of this, this not only sad moment, but celebration of what small positive things have came from Ferguson. It, I don't think no one should be scared there. Just like last time, you know, everyone got so frightened that, oh my gosh, horrible things are going to happen. Nothing horrible came if anything positive came out of it.